And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three about three score furlongs, which is about seven miles. Yeah. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And they came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you, you have to one another as you walk and are sad. And one of them, whose name was Cleophas, answering, said to him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And has thou not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And then, we're just going to skip forward here, on the road to Emmaus, Yeshua says, Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh into the village whither they went, and, and he made as though he had gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat with, at, at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and brake it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Amen. Amen. And guys, right here behind us here, we are literally on the road to Emmaus. You see the sign, To Jerusalem. And Brother Kellen is actually staying here in a home here that is a bounce three furlongs, seven miles out from the city there. So we're going to talk to you a little bit, and we're going to try to uh, manage our camera ourselves. And uh, go ahead and go. And uh, so we can kind of talk to you about what's going on here. So we just finished up the uh, reconciliation with Israel Conference and staying at this house and on this road to Emmaus where Yeshua revealed himself to two of his followers. Uh, it just seems fitting after we just left an event where people traveled from Singapore, Australia, South Africa, Canada, UK. Uh, we even had people who were originally from Africa come. And uh, all of these people were hungry to hear both Jewish and Christian perspective as to the foundations of what they believe in scripture, finding areas of commonality, the things that Yeshua would have talked about on this very road, revealing that he was the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah of Israel. So we had a great response. We'll follow up with uh, the videos online and, and DVDs and, and all that. But the question was asked in the conference, what should we do to carry this forward? And it's really just staying in the Word and listening to His Spirit. Uh, yes. You know, I'm not bashing a leader or anything, but He said that you have no need for a man to teach you. He would teach you. And this is this is from the, the beginning of the Bible. So Amen. take advantage of the resource uh, that yes. we have in the Holy Spirit. Exactly right. You know, it's when you walk up, of course, by the way, if you guys don't know, I'll probably be panting in a few minutes <laughs> uh, as we walk up this hill here. So they didn't have it easy, that's for sure. Uh, but of course, they were probably more accustomed to walking the mountains here. But it's such a beautiful place to begin with, too, to be able to see where the apostles walked, where Jesus himself walked, Yeshua, and it's just a blessing, a, a tremendous blessing. And, uh, and Father, we just pray for those that are hungry to know the yes. truth. That just as you revealed your, yourself through, this, through the scriptures, that uh, you will reveal yourself to everyone watching this video. 
So, Brother Steve and I, anyone that watches this, that they will have revelation, deeper knowledge of, yes. of who their Messiah is. And we pray for those that uh, they watch out for deception coming, as uh, there are increasing headlines coming out, uh, trying to mix the ecumenical movement uh, done by Pope Francis and others to even tie them into the Jewish feast now. Uh, ahead of his, his visit here coming in a few days to the U.S. So pray for discernment and just uh, awareness of who you are, Father. Amen. You know, one thing, speaking of that, Brother Kellen, and we've, Brother Kellen shared with me some articles there uh, where Pope Francis is, what he's speaking about here about getting involved in the feast. And I mentioned to you not long ago um, that we may see, is that the road we come out on? People okay, are. okay. <laughs> that, uh, that no doubt we may see, especially what we're seeing with people like Rick Warren uh, promoting the Vatican and the agenda that is going on there. Ariella, come with, come with us. Come across. That uh, it's, much, it's a lot like having a false prophet. Uh, when you see the evangelical community that's coming together to support the Pope of Rome. And I've been very concerned that we may end up finding a messianic believer that backs him, uh, a Jewish person, especially in light of the fact that he's mentioning the feast. And it's something you guys need to be aware of as well. If you see a messianic believer, especially if someone has notoriety that believes in the feast, begin to come together to support the Pope of Rome and the agenda that he has in Israel. This is something you got to be aware of, majorly aware of. And I would have to venture to say, if we get a person like that, we may find biblical fulfillment of the false prophet. Many people think Pope Francis is a false prophet. I personally believe he's the Antichrist. And I've even said that I believe that he might play both roles. But as we see things unfolding, I'm beginning to wonder if he won't be more like the Pharaoh of Egypt. And that is, the Pharaoh of Egypt had two, um, two men that withstood Moses that were basically uh, spiritualists of, of their day. They had all kinds of powers and signs and wonders. And we know that there's supposed to be great miracles that will happen here in the day that we're living in. And so, just be aware. Be aware of these things. Let's show you here where we come from. I mean, that is a hill. Jerusalem is back right over the hill. Yes, Jerusalem's right over the hill there, guys. And unfortunately, they paved the road to Emmaus. Been better if it had been natural, but it's not. <laughs> Brother Kellen, what's some of your thoughts? You got a chance to breathe. Uh, now I'm going to breathe. Uh, well, I think it was good what you said, brother. I... Uh... I'm I'm just excited to see what uh, what good is going to be happening in the midst of uh, increased ecumenical deception. Yeah, we saw here in Jerusalem people hungry and people online from around the world hungry to to know the truth. People shocked at some of the things that all of our speakers outlined, and we did see genuinely three Jewish speakers all interested in reconciliation. Uh, based on the scripture. You know, we have two things in common. And Yeshua said them plainly in the Gospels. The young man asked him, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? The lawyer asked him, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? He told the young man, keep the commandments and live. And then the young man said, which commandments? Yeshua said, uh, start listing out the Ten Commandments. And then the lawyer asked the same question, and he said, uh, Behold, the Lord our God is one. Love your neighbor as yourself. These are things that our Jewish brothers say the same exact thing. Yes. And we say we pray to the, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Should we not find more unity around these things? Amen. Amen. You know, one thing I've seen about too, Brother Kellen, was Avi Lipkin. Yes. Uh, he, after I had spoke, he came up. And he actually confirmed, uh, surprisingly, because he had actually had an invitation to the Vatican. Mm -hmm. His son went in his place because of the 
wanting to start the Christian party here, a uh, Christian Judeo party here to, to represent the Christian community. And when he got up to speak after I did, he brought out, he couldn't make it himself because of the health condition at the time, a surgery he had to have. And, but his son went in his place, came back. They told him to meet with the, as they called it, the vicar of Israel. And the vicar of Israel challenged him and said, you might remember it better. What he, he mentioned the part about, are you going to be um, against the Palestinian or the Arabic people? How did he put that? I forget the exact wording, brother, but uh, there was to the effect that they were very supportive until um, they were very supportive until the um, the part about working between you know Protestants. I think that might have been the piece there. Is then they immediately there. So either the Palestinians or the Protestants. And this will be on the tapes from the conference as we yes. do have this recorded, where they told him no, and then we cannot endorse this. Right. Because he was not, uh, he's not for the Arabic people in this. He believes they've already been represented in yes. another in other parties, and uh, and they said, we've already gotten an answer back from the Vatican because of your stance on the Arabic people, the Palestinians. We will not support you in any way. So he got to see firsthand as well. The Rome is very political. He also mentioned how that Rome, who should be standing for the Christian people basically abandoned the people of Bethlehem and in favor of the Palestinians. And sure enough, them knowing it already, 90% uh, of the Christian population is no longer in Bethlehem as a result. So you have to wonder, what is Rome's motive in all of this? And I'll say this, we also, at the same time we were holding our conference, I found out there was a conference of Catholics and Jews trying to discuss areas of commonality. There's a big push that's starting to take place between merging Roman Catholicism with the Orthodox Judaism. So that again, be careful with with the uh, the merging of the feast with this ecumenical movement. There's going to be an interreligious prayer service next week that the Pope will hold, and we've seen articles saying that Jews are going to be attending that as well. Yeshua said that there's only one way, not many broad ways to Him. That's exactly right. It's amazing at the uh, different things that they're trying to put together um, as far as trying to bring all this together. But anyway, we'll share more with you guys a little bit later. We're going to try to learn how to breathe now when we're not talking. So God bless you all and uh, hope you enjoyed the little walk we had. Uh, it's easier for you guys to watch than it is for us to talk and do it. <laughs> God bless you very much from Israel. With Kellen Davidson here with myself, Stephen Dunn. God bless you. Ciao.